Hey, Matt, the mortgage guy here. Wanted to record a quick video to talk about the eviction and foreclosure moratorium that got extended. I also want to talk about updates to forbearance and your ability to request forbearance. Also going to jump into my personal beliefs on, on forbearance because they've changed over time since the CARES Act was initially implemented in early 2020 till now. Um, I've, I've kind of changed my tone on what I feel about forbearance. And so I think, um, I've had multiple interviews on other folks' podcasts, but really haven't said anything on my channel about it. So I thought I'd take today to, to send out a little bit of information, at least my two cents on this. So first and foremost, the eviction and foreclosure moratorium has been extended. Originally, it was set to expire at the end of December, and that's a lot of fancy words. And basically what it's saying is that um, if you are having difficulties due to COVID-19, you've lost your job or you're unable to work a certain number of hours, you can't be evicted from your house or foreclosed upon. That was set to expire on December 31st. That has been extended until February 28th, so the end of February 2021. So um, good news for folks who are struggling. There's protections in place where you can't be um, foreclosed upon or evicted if you're a renter. Um, I know plenty of investors and I know plenty of folks who um, are upset on the landlord side because they've got tenants who are using this as an excuse, tenants that are still getting paid um, and still working full time. They just feel like they don't want to pay rent and they're kind of using this as an out. Um, I probably won't get into discussing my thoughts on that because um, it's a hard time for everybody. It's a hard time for a small landlord that owns a couple of rental properties and has to continue to make the mortgage payment when their tenant is not paying. It's a hard time for plenty of tenants who are scraping by trying to figure out whether they buy Christmas gifts, buy groceries, or pay their rent. So um, I'm not going to choose sides. I'm just going to say I hope we as a country get through some of these tough times. Um, another thing that got extended, and here's what we have so far. If I jump into this article here, forbearance. FHA is saying that you can, they're extending the, the amount of time that they're allowing you to request your initial forbearance. And so that deadline also extended to the end of February, meaning that if you haven't taken forbearance and you have a hardship due to COVID-19, they're going to allow you to request it. And you can request it all the way up until that February 28th date for a six month period. It says right here, 180 day period. And then during that time, if you still need it, you can ask for a 180 day extension. So what's that saying is up until the end of February, you can not only request forbearance for six months, but you'd also be eligible for six month extension, meaning you could take a year of forbearance. Now, here's where I'm going to put in a little bit of my thoughts on this. When forbearance first came about, we knew very little bit about it. Lenders didn't know how they're going to treat it. Um, the servicers didn't know how they were going to treat it. Nobody really knew how it was going to affect somebody's credit. They said it wasn't going to affect credit, but we didn't really know that for sure. They didn't know how they were going to handle repayments of forbearance because forbearance, remember, is you're basically not paying your mortgage payment. And at first it was, we'll figure it out when we get to the end. And a lot of lenders or servicers were saying, after you take three or six months forbearance, we want it all back. We want a lump sum. That never was a good idea. Somebody who's having difficulty paying $2,000 per month right now is not going to have an easy time paying $2,000 three months from now along with the $6,000 is now owed in arrears. So that was a pretty ill-advised strategy. So what's happening now? Lenders are much more lenient. You're able to just lump that on to the back of your loan. You're not going to pay any extra interest. And what basically happens in that scenario I talked about, you miss three months and your mortgage payment is $2,000 a month. You owe them $6,000 now. They say your first mortgage, you owe three sixty two. dollars Your second, which they make this one a second mortgage, you owe $6,000. Interest is accruing on that first. Why well, I can't remember the number I said, three sixty two. dollars and that 6,000 is just kind of a, a silent second that you're not worrying about on a monthly basis. But if you refinance or sell your house, pay off the house, you're going to have to pay off that $6,000. So 
that's a good thing. With that and with the fact that it's not hurting folks' credit and there's plenty of options to get out of it, I am advising way different than I was eight or nine months ago. Eight or nine months ago, I said, avoid it at all costs. You don't know the implications. You're going to dig yourself a bigger hole than just trying to figure out a way to pay your monthly mortgage. Now I've got plenty of clients where I've seen, and unfortunately, we've been in this a lot longer than any of us thought, that they truly need the help. They truly need forbearance. And knowing that in three months or six months when they come out of forbearance, if they still qualify for a loan because they're, they're working and you know still eligible for a refinance, which was a big part of it, then go ahead and take it. And many, many, many different lenders have eased their guidelines, restrictions, whatever you want to call it. Once you're out of forbearance and you show that there's no missed payments, all, all you have is the $6,000 second or $12,000 second because you were in forbearance for six months. Once you're current and there's no late payments, you're eligible to refi. Granted, you qualify, you credit qualify, your credit's um, still still good and you've got the income to qualify, then you're good to go. And I was afraid for a lot of people with historically low rates and people saving hundreds of dollars per month, thousands per year, that they were going to miss out on a refinance opportunity if they took this forbearance. Now I'm telling you, keep paying your bills, make sure you're in forbearance properly and so there's not going to be any late payments because you're you've you've opted into forbearance and go ahead and take it. If that means you're able to handle some other bills, handle whatever other things you have going on and that's going to relieve stress and whatnot, then take it. And let's visit a refinance in 3 months or 6 months when you exit forbearance. This was a lot different tune than what I was um singing when the CARES Act CARES Act was initially brought about. I mean, I made three or four different videos that said avoid forbearance at all costs. So that's my updated view on forbearance. I just wanted to um, pop into a couple of these articles just to see what is being talked about. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is FHA borrowers. FHA insured mortgage, you can request this forbearance up until the end of February. What is going to happen is that Fannie and Freddie, where your conventional loans are sent, are going to follow and they're going to have something similar. It's almost inevitable. Um, that's what um, happens. Um, FHA comes out with a guideline and then the others follow. So, um, any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. This is their actual, FHA's actual um, announcement on Monday. Extension of the foreclosure and eviction moratorium. Through the end of February 2021 and the extension of requesting initial forbearance. All right, Matt, the mortgage guy. Hope this was helpful. Hope uh, everyone out there is doing well and I hope we... Um, turn a corner in 2021 and get over all this stuff so that we can get back to uh, operating our small businesses, getting out, hugging our friends and family and all that good stuff. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Let me know if I can help. Shoot me an email, Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at mattthemortgageguy.com. Thanks. Bye-bye.